Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Dubai Works Business Podcast. This week, I have a very honorable guest, uh, Rizwan Sajan, the founder and chairman of Danube Group. Over the last 27 years, the company has charted a path that transformed from being one shop and one employee to a global uh, company with over 3,500 employees, 50 locations in nine countries worldwide, including UAE, Kuwait, Oman, Bahrain, Qatar, Africa, and India. Danube Group occupies more than 5.5 million square feet of land in Jebel Ali Free Zone. The warehouses across UAE stock more than 50,000 products, and the company recorded a turnover of $1.3 billion in 2019. Wow, what a success story. On this week's show, though, we're really interested to talk to the chairman about how the group has uh, brought back salaries, the first company in the Middle East to not just bring back salaries, but to pay back the salaries cut during COVID-19, and then touch a little bit on how they built this building uh, company, and also uh, 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 Rizwan himself being an inspiration for many entrepreneurs. So thank you so much for your time, Rizwan. Thank you, Richard, for having me over here. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so we we heard through Love in Dubai, our, our sister company and brand, that um, not that the whole Danube group, so all those employees I mentioned, have had a special news that they're getting all the salaries that they so generously gave up during the global pandemic that they've been returned that and we you know not only across the Middle East but we haven't even heard this in in US news of companies doing that so is it true and can you tell us a little bit more about it yeah it's absolutely true you know what happens is uh, Richard the whole company which I always feel is built by my people over here uh, it's like Tom Ford saying it like take back burn my building, burn my factory, but keep my people back. I'll again make the whole, uh, again make the Ford cars running for you. Yeah. The same way with my employees also. They are the one who are working day and night, giving for the company. And this was the first time in my life that I've ever cut salary of somebody. Hmm. Uh, it was really bothering me, hurting me. But as the time went forward further, we started, started uh, going into the market, uh, motivating the people, getting the business a little bit back on track, not as, as much as what it was the pre-COVID layer, but it was not bad. We were able to survive and manage. And then one day I decided with the, all the management team, I, I'm not going to hold this salary, whatever salary which is detected, let us pay back. So this was a gesture of goodwill, uh, which I'm very happy that I've made that decision because I know that God will reward me more than that. That's amazing. And but just so so it was a 30 percent cut and the employees actually stayed with the company. They understood it was a big global uh, pandemic and that they wanted to support the company. And, you know, so it's really an employee initiative. And then the company has got together the board and decided to return that in kind. Yeah. See, the initially, if you remember when the COVID started, a lot of people were firing people. So the first statement we had made at that particular time that we're not going to lay off any people in the company. Now, that was a big motivating factor for anybody who was working for me because the majority of the people had the insecurity of the job. Now, when they knew that, yes, we are not going to be laid off, they really went out, all out, and they worked so hard in the COVID. Poor guys, you know, in, in the full COVID, they used to go in there with the mask and covered completely and trying to get orders from me. And that, that was really helped us. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. And you mentioned Riz, in 27 years or the whole company that you never had to do this before. Uh, how, how serious did you think this was in March or how much of an impact was it? Or was it unprecedented? Well, in March, when this whole thing was announced, we had no idea how this was going to impact us. Uh, I had almost thought that whatever money I've made in the last 27 <laughs> years is all wiped out in the <laughs> next two, nine months. Wow. The next one year. But God has been kind. Our industry was not as badly affected as the other industries. Mm. Uh, the construction because of the expo which is happening and the other uh, projects which are happening around the GCC industry was running. Uh, like I said, it was not the, not as a pre-COVID level, but yes, it was running to a manageable way and that's how we got back into the track. But we were lucky enough that God's uh, blessings were there that our industry was not as affected like the hospitality or the other aviation industry and all that. Interesting. So it's it's the 11th of November. I think some companies maybe um, returned the salaries, the temporary cuts, or they brought it back maybe at some point. But not only have you done that, you've decided to pay back. Is that Has that given you confidence in the market that 
you know, rather than waiting till the end of the year and to see the final books and accounts or to do it that way, you've decided to do it now. Is, does that mean that uh, that you're you're happy with the performance of the company this year, or is it more? That's... Uh, like I said, the performance is good enough, not as good as the pre-COVID level, but good enough for me to sustain. And if you remember, in India, we celebrate Diwali. Yes. So this was a festive season. I said, what better time it could be than distribute before the Diwali. So, you know, we have a majority of the non-Muslims working with us. So we're very happy with this. Ah, amazing. It's like a big bonus there. Ah, amazing. So that's a nice gesture. Ah, that, that makes sense now. That's, that's really kind. That's yeah. really good. Um, so, yeah, so basically for people who are familiar with your brand in different ways, whether it's true buildings or the construction or also the Danib home, the, the retail spaces that we that we shop in. Um, can you just give a, a little bit of a context and uh, to the scope and the size of the company? Uh, well, Danube has major big three verticals. Uh, the first one, which was the Danube building material, which was formed 27 years ago. Uh, that today is by far the... I would say the number one building material company in the whole region. Uh, then 2008, exactly like how we have this pandemic crisis, we had the Lehman Brothers crisis at that particular time. 2008, 2009, my first store was open during the crisis because I had already conceived that idea about the Danim home much before. And when we opened the store, it was everybody was thinking this boss has gone mad that everybody is firing people and left and right uh, people are closing down their business and he's expanding your business. But anyway, I had to go out and open it because everything was ready over there. So Danube Home was established in 2000. Danube Home deals in all the interiors and home furnishing of the material which is required in the house. So, you know, after that, we in 2012, we started our property business. 2012, wow. 2013, 2000, end of 2012, 2013. So seven years ago, we started our property business because at that time, the market settled down after the problems, the, the RERA came into the effect, all the extra accounts were formed. I said, this is the right time to start the property business. So as you look at the whole vertical of the demo, we sell the building material, we sell the home furnishing, and if you want the house, we also make the house for you. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> So, complete package. <laughs> amazing. So almost like Apple or Google, except in the property construction building space. <laughs> so Absolutely. that's really clever. It's really good. And it's also interesting, strategically, uh, we see people trying to introduce new verticals. Is it hard in your experience, irrespective of externalities like a global financial crisis or a pandemic? Is it hard to, you know, obviously the building materials, you know the margins, you know the distribution, you know the... The factories you know what's required but to have retail space in a mall is something different how do you kind of approach a new a new business unit uh, what happens is when you start any business uh, there is there are challenges over there and over the time you learn over the challenges and uh, like i mentioned before we have a very good professionals working for us and they were able to overcome the challenges faster for us and today if you go to any of my denim home stores uh, I would, Richard, I want you to try this. Go as a surprise uh, visit for me. And then you see the service level you will get over okay. there. The people are so much motivated that they won't let you go until you buy something from there. And after you buy from there, they'll ensure that you get a full service over there. I'm, I'm uh, sure they're, so, I'm sure as well, they're extra motivated today on this positive news. But no, that's, that's really interesting. And I can see that that's p part of the culture and those type of things from the service level might lead to decisions absolutely. like this. So it's very absolutely. interesting. Um, and in Danube is the only store uh, in the whole of GCC where you can get everything. Like if you go to all my competitors over there, somebody might be only selling furniture or somebody might be only selling bathrooms over there or somebody might be selling only wallpaper. Here you go, you get A to Z. I mean, you get your wall, wall covering, you get your curtains, you get your flooring, you get your glass, doors, windows, furnishing, garden furniture everything under one roof so you just enter the shop and you enter when you back, take a new house you just go there and pick up whatever you want and all the accessories what you require like the the, uh, the bed sheets the pillows uh, the cutlery everything under one roof you get uh, to furnish your house that's amazing i'll pay more attention to it now that i understand the background but just in terms of danib group uh, and uh, i mentioned jasa is is that where all the materials for the region comes through is that where the the main sort of warehousing is our main our main warehousing you're talking about danube warehousing right yeah we danube warehousing is mostly in jabalali and technopark 
where we have more than 5 million square feet of warehousing, proper logistic facilities. And from there, we distribute to the different uh, areas of the USA, uh, like Kuwait, Qatar, and all that we post to different places. So you really see Dubai as a, as a structural hub for the region? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, how is the offerings in the different countries? Do, is it uh, obviously, you know, is the brand at different levels there? Do you have the building materials and do you have Danube Home in, in, the, in all the different countries as well? Absolutely. We have Danube Home in, being in Kuwait, in uh, Bahrain, in Oman. We have very good operations of Danube Home. Uh, so majority of the places we have our Danube Home operations also, and including India also. We have Danube Home okay. Amazing. I want to touch on entrepreneurship and the, some of the uh, acknowledgements. So we, we just have to talk about one more vertical, which is the properties. Oh, yes, I just want please. to mention, you know, what happened was we, when we started these properties, uh, it was a very tough time because everybody was selling the properties and majority of the properties were sold of a very, uh, you know, all the villas and the high, high properties were sold or high, uh, big values properties were sell, sold in the market. Yeah, uh, but then we thought to ourselves, let us not do sort something everybody is doing. Let us focus on eighty percent of the expats who are still living in the rented apartment. Okay, and we decided to focus on them and came out with a smaller pricing apartment. That means if you if you go to Danube Properties, we start our apartment from three hundred thousand dirhams only because I wanted that people who are staying in the uh, rented apartment, for example, if anybody is staying in a studio apartment, who would rather take their three hundred thousand dirhams and buy their own apartment of his own. Now, that also was a challenge because the majority of the experts don't have this money of 300,000 dirhams to pay. And how do we do that? So we came out with a plan of only paying 1% per month. That means you pay 30% 30,000 dirhams as your down payment. And then you pay 1% for me, 1% per month uh, for the 6, 7, 8, 8 years. So absolutely, there's no burden on the finance for the expert. And you are getting your own property to stay in it. Amazing. And that was a major success because uh, majority of the people who were staying in the rented apartment, they started buying the property from us. So do you offer the financial product or is that because you've, you're the developer so you can do that arrangement with the, with the clients? That's good. I, I, I do the arrangement with my bank and I pass it on to the customer. Okay, very interesting. But again, showing innovation in the retail space, but I think it's inspiring to see that there's a cohort of, of people that you've identified that can have a new offering in the market and create a business model around it. That's correct. And Rizwan, we, we, we often, um, I know you, uh, you have done you've been in India as well. And of course, it's a country that's a large population compared with the UE, but also very close to here. And in recent years, the, it's known globally as a real emerging market. There's a lot of investments. There's a lot of uh, big economy coming out of India. How do you see that relationship between the GCC and India in terms of business? Do you think that they can grow successfully together? India is a huge market, but also a very challenging market. It's not an easy market. I mean, as much as people think that India is an easy market, no, because the competition level is very high. Uh, there are a lot of other uh, complications to be. But again, these all challenges can be overcome. But if you enter India, I mean, there is no looking back. Like if you're successful over there, the market is so big yeah. that it can make this, the business can grow 10 times over there. It's just that you need to find the correct formula and to ensure that you work with that formula and be <laughs> successful. We just entered India one, one and a half years ago. So we're just trying to still study the market. And once we are ready, we'll go all out in, in uh, all the cities in the India market. How, how did you enter it with your three verticals or one at a time? No, only at the Danube home, only as Danube home, because we felt as a huge go for retail and we opened our first shop in Hyderabad uh, one and a half years ago. Okay, interesting. So as you said, you're kind of dipping your toe in and ready to go all in. And does each... Absolutely. Yeah, it's very interesting to hear and to see that Dubai is a springboard for such a big market and opportunity in India. Um, opportunity is huge, but challenges are also huge, I would, like I said. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a cake pop for me. But yes, we are working towards it. We hired some very important people, very professional people, and I'm sure they'll work out some formula that that's going to be successful. So the model is very successful in GCC, just that we have to replicate a little bit, little bit of changes over there and make it happen. And what about, oh, uh, there's an issue with Zoom. Uh, sorry. Uh, what about uh, Saudi Arabia? Is that a market that you're looking at as well? Saudi Arabia, we're already there. Okay. Uh, it's not in a big way, yes, but we're already over there. Uh, and it's a good market to be in. Uh, I, I love Saudi Arabia because the market is big. The people are there. They have money also. 
Yeah. Uh, so we will also be expanding over there. But at the moment, we have a small presence over there. Our major focus is now at, in the whole UAE market, Oman, Bahrain, Qatar, and Kuwait. Okay, interesting. It's great to hear. It's inspiring talking to you about you know emerging middle classes and obviously wanting homes and property and aspirational. And Rizwan, I have a list of acknowledgements that you've received. I don't want to kind of flatter you because, but um, you know, top fifty most powerful Indians in the UAE by Arabian Business. Uh, listed number seven of the top Indian leaders uh, in the UAE by Forbes, Middle East Acknowledgements from Gulf Business, um, Star Business Leadership Award 2017, Visionary of the Year, uh, CEO Awards, Hamad bin Rashid, Al Maktoum, uh, Business Excellence Award. I could go on. Yeah, <laughs> many, no, many, that's, many, enough. <laughs> that's enough. I know. I, I didn't want to flatter you, but I, I just wanted to set the <laughs> context because, you know, you really are an inspirational leader. And what, what sort of advice do you have for entrepreneurs, the people who want to emulate that success? Um, I think always, one thing I always, when I go for any of these uh, talks where I have to give that inspirational talk, uh, talks, the most important thing which I will tell everybody is there is no shortcut to success uh, because everybody thinks that, you know, they want to make the money very fast. So that's not going to happen. You need to start slowly and most important, try to gain an experience in whatever field you want to be. Uh, you want to become a restaurant owner or you want to become a fashion designer or you want to become anything else. Uh, but you need to take an experience working in a good company. Make sure that you know in and out. For example, if, you're, if you want to start a restaurant, make sure you work in the kitchen, you work in the, uh, you work as a waiter over there, understand the whole thing, what, uh, what the customer sentiments are, and then decide to have your restaurant. And then you'll be, it will be much easier for you. Like when I started this business of building material, I had worked for Manchester for eight years, and that's where I earned the experience from a counter salesman to become the manager of the company. So exactly, I knew what's happening and how do I manage the business. And it was easy when I started my own business, although I didn't have the money. But uh, the experience taught me as to how to move forward with every challenge which I faced. It's very interesting you mentioned. What was there another option back then? Uh, you know, were people doing VC or startups or trying to make the quick buck or? Was the way that you did it the way that was kind of uh, the only option at the time to kind of work hard and organically? Option means when, when we started the business, it was I started as a broker. I didn't, like I said, I didn't have the money. The only money which I had was 100,000 dirham, which I saved from my eight years of working. Uh, that 100,000 dirhams I start, I, I put into a brokerage company for that. I bought my, uh, the, the rented an office, bought a car for me, I made a uh, trading license. And which 50, 60,000 dirhams already gone with that. And 30, 40,000, which was remaining, I told my wife, this is the six months of our savings, which we need to use it <laughs> very carefully to buy your ration, because after that, I will not have that money. Wow. And in six, seven months, if I don't make this money, then I'll start looking for a job. And that's how I started my company. Amazing. I love the way you remember all the exact numbers as well. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> it shows very, very business acumen. But yeah, because I've been, I've been speaking about this many, many times. <laughs> It's okay. back of my mind that what I had, what I had in mind and what I spent and what I exactly gave it to my wife to manage that for six to seven months of that time. Amazing. <clears throat> do you, how important do you think is that entrepreneurial spirit in India and the UAE and the GCC? Is do do you think that this is the fundamental of you know an improved uh, economy and prosperous life uh, for people in the future in this region? It's a very good thing if you if you have that. If you feel that you have the quality of becoming an entrepreneur, you should try. Of course, today is not the right time to, I would say, to, to go into an entrepreneurship because the markets are much more challenging. But if then the market improves after a couple of years, yes, if you have that quality in you, you should definitely try at the right age because at, after you cross 40, 45, then if you try and if you fail, then you are in a big, bigger problem. So the right age for you to try as an entrepreneur should be in the range of 30 to 35, or 30 to 40, I would say. Because by 30, you have gained some experience. And and before that 40, if you try, uh, you are, have a chance because you have that energy level, you have that vision that your brain is working more stronger and you can definitely uh, do it better compared to what you would do after 50. Interesting. And how do you still how do you still innovate? How do you still stay on top of it uh, and the size of the company and the different verticals? Do you empower uh, leaders throughout the business? Uh, like every uh, vertical which we have, we have the top professionals managing over it, and they are on top of it. Like example, denim home or denim building, because of denim properties, 
uh, if you have to take any home or any building materials, people traveled across the world to different exhibitions, trying to figure out what are the new products coming in the market. We try to introduce the market. We have the consultants. We talk to them on a regular basis. Um, ensure that in, you know our our products are used for not only in the Burj Khalifa apartment, uh, but also even to a small villa owner, this product goes to them. Uh, in the properties also, we have a very top professional working over there, Mr. Adip, who is my partner in that company. Now, he also is on the top of the world. If you talk, call him at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, he'll be working and making sure things are in okay. order. So Very good uh, work, you know, Anthony. Okay. We have to be, today is the time where you cannot take it anything easily. More challenging times, so much more hard work is required for everything you do. Okay, amazing. And in, in, in addition to this news that, that we heard, uh, it was you also said that you're you're hiring again now, so that's also bringing confidence back into the market. Is that hmm. kind of recognizing the current climate we're in, or is it, you know, are you confident about a vaccine? Um, and how do you view sort of the uh, the next few years in the region? Okay, why we are hiring is, you know, we're not we are not expanding anything. We're not opening many stores or anything like that. In these six seven months, when everybody was at home, I mean, we were not traveling. Otherwise, what was happening is out of the 30 days, you're traveling 15 days and you're busy in your expansion and all that. But this particular six, seven month time, there was a lot of time to think, consolidate, figure out where are the chances, more expansion possible in the same business which we have. Okay. Like, for example, we have a flooring division, but okay, we decide, okay, flooring, we have a certain division, but we, we are not going to, we are not targeting the projects. So we need to hire some people who will go for the project. So that way, there were so many opportunities in our own business, mm. which was missing we were doing well but because we realized when we analyzed that yeah, there is a problem this is a competition who is doing so much business in that particular field which we are missing out in what is he doing so let's figure out and then we started analyzing the whole thing and i said okay let's do re uh, with the own whatever whatever right resources we have we want to make it at the moment maybe at 60 percent we probably try to make it 70 80 percent so that you know uh, and that is the reason we're hiring more people Okay. Very Rather than making opening new stores or make opening new properties and all that. It's investing in your existing business units and models yeah. and reinvesting in the business as we've seen with the with the salaries giving back. So just a final question. I won't take up too much of your time, but there's some trends in prop tech and different types of concepts in the US about um, quickly uh, built up apartment units and, and houses of prefab things and how do you view uh the those sort of trends uh, and how how do you assess them as a leader uh yes that trend might come at the moment it has not come because we haven't got the approval from the authorities over here but eventually it will come over here to bring that for prefab houses and the sparse moving houses but for some reason we haven't got the approvals yet and we are still we are watching it very carefully discussing okay. with the authorities as soon as we have it we'll go it you're keeping a close eye on it, as, I'm, as, as I would expect. Rizman, it's a pleasure talking to you. And, um, you know, I, I, it's great to see the positive news. And that's what Love in Dubai is all about. So congratulations to all the employees of Danube Group. And I hopefully they, they will contribute to the economy. And we'll all have a good, uh, both, uh, you know, nice Diwali that passed and also a festive period for everyone. And I also want to congratulate Love in Dubai. You guys are doing a wonderful job giving us the news across the whole what's happening in Dubai <laughs> and across the world. So keep up the good work. And Thank you. We need the whole team from my behalf. That, that's very kind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. All the best.